Hello YouTube, I uh, <clears throat> stumbled upon something today that I found absolutely interesting and uh, it was an accident and uh, maybe that's how most great things get found but anyway, you know, this has probably been done before but uh, I didn't know about it and uh, it was pretty interesting so I uh, I thought I'd show you first I'd like to show you a, uh, a ballon uh, that a friend of mine, uh, Dan, WB3JPZ, had uh, turned me on to uh, in my uh, quest to get a 6 meter delta loop antenna to work uh, instead of using a 75 ohm quarter wave length matching section um, <clears throat> to get the uh, 100 and plus give or take I guess uh, ohms down to 50 he uh, he decided on uh, perhaps I should use the option of a 4 to 1 ballon so anyway this is a uh, this is an email he sent. Oh, excuse me. Of the uh, the four to one ballon, and what I ended up doing is uh, taking a ferrite rod from an old AM radio and removed the AM antenna from it, and I used a uh, twenty gauge stranded wire. <coughs> and did 20 wraps, 20 turns across and uh, either configuration here you can use for the uh, delta loop and uh, <clears throat> it'll uh, give you a 4 to 1 balance. So anyway, this is what the finished product looks like and uh, so that's what I did. I made one and I put a little pigtail on it and uh, it works just cool. Uh, so anyway, uh, we made a six meter uh, delta loop antenna, and uh, that works just fine. So I decided I wanted to make other delta loop antennas. So I uh, started out with a, a two meter, two meter uh, antenna. I think it was seven foot five inches. What was it? Seven foot five and three quarter inches, I believe it was. I uh, couldn't get the SWR lower than uh, what was it? I think it was 1.7 to 1, uh, which is usable. <clears throat> However, uh, I decided to keep on going with my little quest, and uh, I ended up building a, uh, a 70 centimeter version. And starting a little long, I decided to go with three feet of wire. So anyway, uh, that's what this is here. And uh, it's just a small antenna, so I decided to use a piece of PVC and I just drilled a hole through, stuck the wire through, and uh, again at the top here, so um, the loop actually just sits right on the end of the PVC. Uh, so anyway, let me uh, get the ballon connected in place, and then I'd like to show you what it looks like on the analyzer. Okay, now we have the ballon uh, in place uh, attached to the radiating element at the end of a PVC pipe. Let me pull this through here just a little bit, give it more of that circle shape. Uh, not the most perfect circle, but uh, nonetheless, it is uh, somewhat round. Anyway, so let me get this thing hooked up here and uh, we'll show you what it looks like on the analyzer. Okay, <clears throat> all hooked up here. I'm sure I look a little bit ridiculous, but uh, that's okay. I'm used to my neighbors looking at me funny now, and uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, like I said, I was going to show you what this looked like on the analyzer. So let me pull the analyzer out here and uh, turn it on. Wish we had a little bit of shade here. Perhaps if I put it at an angle here. Um, okay. Now, at the uh, bottom of 440 where I want to be, it's not really that usable. And again, remember I said that I wanted to use this specific element on 70 centimeters. Well, I'm not really, uh, I don't know, 440 is kind of where I hang out. And it's at a a 2.0 to 1 SWR ratio, and that's not uh, that's not exactly where I want to be. 
So anyway, before I even started making any uh, adjustments to the radiating element, I thought it'd be a good idea just to check uh, to see where it was on the VH VHF um, portion in the two meter band. So anyway, let's go right smack dab in the middle of the band there, 146 megahertz. We got a 1.1 1 .1 to 1 uh, ratio, which is absolutely amazing. Now look how wide banded this is. This is just absolutely impressive. It's not down until about 130 megahertz before it goes above 1.5. Let's see what it looks like uh, until we get to 1.5 on the upper end. Okay. So uh, 154, uh, 155 megahertz. Absolutely, uh, impressively wide banded. And uh, so next, uh, we'll see what this thing sounds like on the air. And uh, I don't know, it's just absolutely amazing. It uh, turns out to be a perfectly resonant antenna for a two meter band. Um, and I'm assuming it's a half wave delta loop. Uh, I don't really know. But I don't know that much about delta loops. But uh, this appears to be. Uh, a very functional delta loop anyway. So, uh, next we'll uh, plug it up to do the handheld and we'll see what it sounds like. Okay. Here's the uh, Chambersburg uh, repeater. And uh, looks like our uh, output power there is it's a uh, Three, so uh, I think that's uh, two and a half watts out, and uh, let's try to get into the repeater on two and a half watts. Let me call out for uh, <clears throat> one of my buddies here. He's the one that turned me on to the ballon. WB3JPZ, WB3JPZ. This is KB3TQO. WB3 JPZ, WB3 JPZ, this is KB3 TQO. Well, looks like we got an S5 from the repeater, so that's uh, <clears throat> that's much better than uh, what the rubber duck does already. Um, doesn't appear that we're, uh, we're getting them anyway. And, uh, I don't know. Perhaps we'll uh, we'll try some other repeaters here. Let's uh, scan around and see what we get. Okay, we're not really uh, getting anybody there. see here. <clears throat> we'll give it another shout out here on uh, 147.120. WB3 JPZ, WB3 JPZ, this is KB3 TQO. Okay, well we're not uh, <clears throat> we're not getting anybody on the repeater uh, right now, but uh, we are receiving uh, the repeater signal at an S5, which is uh, much better than the rubber duck does. So that's uh, that's a good sign. Now, what a what a delta loop does over a uh, over a, a half wave dipole, I don't know. Um, I don't know if this uh, is a very effective an antenna for uh, my application.